Hey everybody, this is Christopher Brower here with Daily Motor, and today we're driving one of my favorite cars we've ever filmed on Daily Motor, one of the most sinister and evil cars that we've had <laughs> so far this year, and in fact, probably the entire time that I've been with this channel. This is the 2022 Land Rover Defender 90, but not just any Defender 90. This car is packing the 5-liter supercharged V8 with 518 horsepower and 461 foot-pounds of torque, backed by the glorious ZF 8-speed automatic, a combination made, I think, probably in, well, the gates of heaven or something, because it is just perfect. And the actual spec that this car is, this dark gray with this black interior, it's just, it's such an evil combination. It's such a Bond car, which is why I love it so much. If you remember, uh, Jaguar had a commercial a few years ago for the Super Bowl where they just showed how, well, Jaguars are cool because they're driven by people that are evil. They're all, all the baddie cars in movies are always Jaguars with the supercharged V8. And this shares that powertrain and there's something, there's some of that DNA in this Land Rover Defender. So I'm super excited to take you guys out on the road in this car today. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at that supercharged V8. If you're wondering what Defender 90 means, it just means that it is the two-door. You can also have the Defender 110, that is the four-door version. So there's that supercharged V8, excuse the mud splatter, Charlie uh, had his way with this thing in the hardcore uh, route of the off-road course the other day, so there's a little bit of residual splash in here. Um, they do a pretty good job, I mean it's basically just an engine cover, there's not really too much to show you. Engine cover and Charlie's mud splatter. Super lightweight hood, Defender script across the front there. And it's a very evil design too. The, it, it, the front of it looks mad. It's got like evil eyes. And then we've got this, this works for me. It's just like a kind of textured material there on the hood. Gives you the, uh, the off-road vibes. We are sitting on some, how big are these wheels? 22 inch wheels, just a fat five spoke design and some massive Brembo brakes, uh, some of the biggest brakes I've ever seen, uh, but you need it because this is a very big and wobbly SUV. So good brakes are a must. It definitely feels like it's doing an endo when you get really hard on the brakes though. But if you can't tell, I'm super excited about this car. I've been driving it for most of the week. And uh, to be honest with you guys, I didn't really think I would love living with it, but it has just been an absolute pleasure. It's something different. It's sinister, and it's just really a lot of fun. Spare wheel here on the back with a very interesting set of locking, uh, like, little channel drives here. So you can't steal it. You could steal that bolt off if you wanted, but these two are locked in. Back of it opens out, which is neat. You don't have a ton of room back here with the seats up, but when you put the seats down, you do actually have a decent amount of room. More of this material that is uh, similar to what you see on the hood. Got your toolkit under here and uh, your little wheel lock key to get your spare off. Power outlet here if you're doing some camping out of your Defender. And you can also raise and lower the rear suspension back here if you need to put something in, you need the car to be lower down or higher up, you are able to do that uh, on the fly here in the back. I don't know what's in here. It's probably if you're broken down, you can display that so people don't crash into you. All right. Really cool taillight design on this Defender too. They're just clear when they're off. Um, and then when they are illuminated, of course they light up red on the outside, and then when you press on the brakes, they light up red in the middle. It's super cool. Exposed tow hook here, and on the other side, trailer hitch and quad tip, since this is the five liter supercharged V8. Let's go ahead and check out the back seat room, because I think a lot of people probably assume that you don't have a lot of room in the Defender 90, but that is not the case. Seats don't automatically go forward, but they do give you this switch that will remember where the seat was and it'll 
put it back to that once you are out of the back seat. All right, let's go ahead and uh, step back here. Pretty easy to get in. Let's go ahead and move this back. So this will now just go back to where it was before. No, it won't. Just kidding. I was wrong about that. <laughs> okay. That's about where it... No! Please come back. Okay, whatever. We'll leave it right there. Um, in fact, I'll probably just sit behind myself because that's a more accurate... Uh, description of how much room is back here as you can see i've got a ton of room here especially headroom even with this big panoramic moonroof and i love how back seats are in land rovers they of course have stadium seating you can see that just by looking how much higher you sit up in the back seat and um it's super roomy back here i mean you could very comfortably fit three adults back here um, which makes this a five passenger you can also opt for a jump seat in the defender 90 so you could have a six passenger configuration so pretty cool stuff. Uh, we also have your own climate control panel back here. You've got some plugs, plug things in, USB-Cs and just normal uh, cigarette lighter type plugs. Knobs back here for your climate control. Uh, you've got handles to hang on when you're doing zero to 60 in under five seconds. And uh, I got some speakers back here. Really cool, uh, whatever they call these adventure windows or whatever it is. I like to call them skylights because that's how I think of them. But it's just a really, really cool, it's just a cool car. And even the back seat is cool. And I just, I really, really appreciate that. This folds down for uh, rear visibility to make sure you can see where you've been. Armrest here for cup holders if you don't have a passenger in the middle. And I mean, it's just, it's really comfortable. It's really, really usable back here. Even more cup holders down by your feet. Oh, right, I have to do this myself. Oh, but it will do it. You don't have to hold it. Oh, I see. Okay. I've just been doing it wrong. So I wonder then if you tap it once. Oh dear, it's doing it itself. I didn't ask it to do that. Why does, why has it done that? No idea. It's mind of its own. Okay, well, let's go ahead and put this back. <laughs> and uh, we'll go ahead and start this thing up so you guys can hear that supercharged V8. The doors are very large, uh, but they're not super heavy. I haven't found myself, ugh, you know, making that noise while I'm opening the doors. So that is a positive thing. All right, let's fire this thing up. I'll be quiet for the next couple seconds so you guys can get the full experience. Yeah, I've been able to listen to that all week. And um, well, it's really just the best thing in the world. There's something about this powertrain that's just magical. Um, and also everything they put this powertrain in turns into a six figure car magically. So, um, and the story's the same for this Defender, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Interior wise, it's really just a lot of dark materials, but different materials. So you've got this like webbed Spider-Man type suit thing here on the outside. The middle is Alcantara, suede, whatever you want to call it. Our entire steering wheel is Alcantara, which is really nice. And this car's only got about a thousand miles on it. So the steering wheel hasn't been all matted down and made disgusting yet. So that's been pretty enjoyable. It's still nice and soft. And who knows, maybe Land Rover has integrated a material that won't get all matted, pressed down and disgusting. We'll have to see as these Defender 90s age and see how the steering wheels look. Uh, the center console is also a cooler, so that's pretty neat. You've got two settings for, well, cooling, whatever you're cooling in there. Uh, wireless charger right here for your cell phone. Cup holders, massive storage area down here for whatever you might want to store below the console. A pretty simple physical control layout here because Jaguar Land Rover always makes these climate control knobs do so many things as I shall demonstrate. So right now they control our temperature as you can see here as I turn it. But if you push it, it controls your vented and heated seat. Turn to the left for vented, turn to the right for heated. And this is not a normal heated seat. And I'll let you listen to this for a second. 
I'm not sure how well you can hear that on camera, but this isn't just a normal heated seat. It blows hot air at you. It's actually quite nice. I've never um, been in another car that does that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we also are able to use these knobs for our vent speed. You can see our right knob here does that. And then we also use the knob for our drive modes. There are just a ton of things you can do with these climate knobs and um, none of it's really hard to remember or use. I haven't really gotten super confused with using them this week, so that's a good thing. We can also control our ride height here. We can lower down into access height, which just slams this thing down to the ground, which I will show you right now. So there you go, there is access height. Now we'll go ahead and raise it up. All right, now we are in off-road height, or what Charlie likes to call douchebag mode. Check that out, it just looks so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's proper right there. It's quite a bit wobbly when you drive it in this mode, so we won't drive it in this mode today, but I definitely wanted to show you guys what it looked like in full extendo. Go ahead and drop this back down to just its normal height, which you guys saw earlier. All right, um, as far as infotainment goes, it's just the same as any other Jaguar Land Rover infotainment. We do, of course, have Land Rover specific things, slope assist, compass, wheel info. This is all of your off-road aid stuff, wade sensing when you're going through puddles. If you guys are curious to see all of this working and such, I will uh, link the Winding Road magazine down below where um, if you guys are curious to see any of this off-road stuff in action, I will link below Charlie's Winding Road magazine drive um, in which he almost gets stuck. It's actually quite a good watch, so I'll make sure to link that for you guys. Otherwise, though, if you want to learn more about the infotainment or the Meridian sound system, I will link Charlie's sound system and infotainment review down below as well. So with all that out of the way, um, let's get out on the road. I've already spent too much time walking around this thing just because I was so excited about it. But let's go ahead and take this out on the road. Uh, the shifter is interesting. It's actually quite convenient. It's right where your hand naturally goes for a shifter. I have sometimes found it to be slightly in the way of the infotainment screen, but I really only found that the first couple of days that I was driving it. Now I'm actually very used to it and it doesn't bother me at all. A um, handful of different cameras on this Defender. Of course, just our normal reversing camera. Here's our off-road view, and here's our towing view. One thing that's really cool is the 360 camera shows you what's under the car. I hope that shows up on camera. It's a transparent view of our Defender 90 here, and you can actually see what you're driving over. Pretty important for when you are off-roading. So, pretty cool stuff. Been averaging 12.9 MPG this week. EPA on this car is, I believe, 16 city, 19 highway, or 15 city, 19 highway. Pretty accurate. I've just been driving it around very spiritedly because this is my only week I will probably ever have with one of these, so I've been making the most of it. Oh, gosh. This is one of those cars that's just hilarious. It's not quite as hilarious as the Wrangler 392, but it's up there. Really solid feeling interior materials. Turn signal stock feels really nice. Uh, gas and brake pedal feel nice. The tuning for the throttle is not overzealous, which is nice because when you have a car like this on soft suspension with a big V8, you don't want the throttle to be super touchy. She's pointing that way because she missed the turn. Okay. If you've skipped ahead to this part of the video because you didn't want to watch me walk around the car, uh, let's go over the powertrain just one more time. 5 liter supercharged V8, 518 horsepower, 461 foot pounds of torque, and that is mated to a ZF 8 speed automatic transmission which is fantastic. Just listen to this thing sing. Oh. <laughs> That's why oh, my fuel economy has actually just dropped down to 12.8. <laughs> That's why I've been getting such poor fuel economy because I've just been doing that from every stoplight because it's just intoxicating. 
can also take manual control with the shifter or the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. Oh, yes, more of that. Let's go ahead and put us into dynamic mode. Sharpens things up just slightly. Lightning fast gear changes from this eight speed transmission. Of course, as we know this unit to be very, very fast. Even downshifts are just so perfect. I mean, watch this. <laughs> the whole car squats when you get on the gas. It is just the most entertaining thing ever. Let's see if you can see it on camera. Watch this. <laughs> That is just hilarious. And you might think that this is a very cumbersome, wobbly thing, and in some ways it is, but actually this air suspension handles decently around corners. You've got a little bit of body roll, of course, but it's not scary. I mean, look at this. It's not bad at all. And it is a raspy exhaust note that you get from this Defender 90, but it's not as brutal as an SVR car, like the F-Pace SVR or a Range Rover SVR. It kind of splits the difference between just a regular Range Rover, Land Rover, and an SVR. It's a little bit crazy, but it's not full crazy, which is nice uh, because you can have the loud V8-ness when you want, but it'll also settle down quite nicely and it doesn't always have to be insane. That is just, <laughs> it's so fast. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll try and do a little bit of a launch here. Rough ride section. Yeah, no problem at all. It goes over there quite nicely. All right, let's put us back into automatic. And we are in dynamic mode. You have to be stopped to turn traction control off. So we'll do that now once we stop. All right, traction is off, but the car has also shut off, so we'll turn it back on here. Uh, left foot on the brake, right foot on the gas. We don't have launch control, but it'll still launch like hell. Here we go. And there's 60. <laughs> it's a little bit frightening because it lurches forward. <laughs> oh, heavens. Give me traction control back. Thank you. Yeah, this is one of those cars that I just want to go out and keep driving because it's just so much fun. A lot of people are under the impression that you have to have a sports car to go out and do spirited driving, but that just isn't the case. And I learned that when we were driving the Ford Bronco 7-speed manual. That was such a fun car to just go out and drive. And I'm, I found myself doing the same thing with this Defender 90. It's just a fun experience. Sure, it's a large, tall SUV, but it's still an enthusiast car. It's still a driver's car, just in a slightly different way. God, and it sounds good. It's just, oh, this thing's a riot. And I can do this whole thing while gripping Alcantara. I mean, why would you not want to do that? It makes everything better. I can touch a soft material, listen to a V8, and I can look like a Bond villain all at the same time. Speaking of the Alcantara steering wheel here, it is heated. We've got a button here that lights up orange when you touch it. That's pretty cool. Our lane keep assist button lights up green as well when you push that. So we'll try that out in just a second when we merge onto the highway. Uh, I'm in normal ride height, dynamic mode. I'm not gonna do full send around the entrance ramp because this is still a big SUV, but it's not as rollover-y as I thought it would be. It does this just fine. 50 miles an hour, the tires aren't even squealing. Then once you go straight, <laughs> it's so cool. All right, lane keep assist on. Don't believe this to be a steering assist. It'll just yell at you if you go out of a lane. 
Yeah. Let's try out our cruise control here. There you go. We do have radar cruise. You can set your distance. Somehow. Oh, maybe. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I can set our distance that way. Cool, that's a good thing on a $100,000 SUV. We have radar guided cruise, excellent stuff. You can also set a speed limiter with this cruise control. And when you're just in drive, well, we'll go back to comfort mode here in a second, but I kind of want to do one more launch. <laughs> You do hear a little bit of that supercharger too. It's not super pronounced. It's quite muted, but at low RPMs, you can absolutely hear that supercharger. I don't know how well that translates uh, through my audio device there, but hopefully you guys can hear it. All right, let's do one more launch here. Um, but I'm just gonna floor it without uh, brake boosting it. All right, here we go. God, in some ways that feels even faster because the car doesn't get confused as to why you're holding the brake and the gas at the same time. Wow, that is fast and hilarious. I think if you put slicks on this thing, it would wheelie. I genuinely, I think it would. Oh man. Another good thing about Alcantara is when your hands sweat, it just soaks it up. So my hands have been a little bit clammy, but now they're completely dry because it's all transferred into the steering wheel which is kind of a disgusting thought. I bet there's all kinds of other journalists sweat on the steering wheel. It's actually vile now that I think of it. Anyways, we'll gloss over that and talk about something else, which is price. So this Defender 90 uh, with the V8 motor starts at about 105 grand. This one's got a few options, mainly just the paint color and like the grippy floor mats. Um, and plus destination makes this car about $108,000. And uh, well, I think it's worth every penny uh, just because I like it. And it, it's, it's very important to me that cars have character and that cars are different. And there are a number of things with this vehicle that are different. That supercharged V8 alone to me is worth the six figure price tag. The villainous appearance of this car the Alcantara steering wheel, the usability, the, the, the back seat, and just the overall enthusiast nature of this car. I think that they'll have no problem selling these for $108,000. When you start comparing it to other cars that kind of fit the same class, uh, well, you could go a couple of ways with it. You could go as far as Jeep Wrangler 392. That's a little bit cheaper, but it is still a Jeep, and it's insane all the time. The cool thing about this car is it settles down nicely and it's actually very usable as a daily driver. You've got minimal interior rattles, the powertrain is quiet when you're not on it, and it's really just a comfortable car to drive around. Whereas the Wrangler 392 is none of those things because it drives like a bat out of hell all the time. Um, but that car is a little bit cheaper, um, except those are being marked up, so really it's about the same price. Maybe you'd save about 10 grand if you went with the Wrangler 392. And uh, well, perfect timing. We're actually driving by Bronco Jail right now. There's a bunch of Ford Broncos over there, which brings me to the next car that you may want to compare this to, the two-door Ford Bronco. Even when you have one of those fully specced out with the Sasquatch pack and everything with the twin turbocharged V6, it's only about 60, 70 grand with dealer markups and such. So you'd be saving quite a bit of money with one of those as well. But you have to remember, it's still a Ford Bronco. So, you know, the interior rattles and shimmies quite a bit more. You don't have a V8. I'm sure it looks cool. The back seat and the two door is just about as usable as the one in this Defender 90. Um, and it still does have a level of cool factor. I was just talking about how much I like driving that Bronco um, with the seven speed manual. And that's something that the Bronco has that you can't get in this. Of course, uh, with that, you have to opt for the four cylinder, so half the amount of cylinders you have in this Defender, but you can bang gears with that seven speed manual. And it's about half the price of this Defender. Um, what would I choose? Well, if money was no object, I would have the Defender, but you can have pretty much just as much fun 
in a two-door seven-speed manual Bronco. It's a little bit of a different level of fun, but still. It just depends on what you value, and um, well, I think I value this Defender most. This is honestly one of those cars that you don't really think of when you're thinking of like the Ford Bronco and the Jeep Wrangler, which, fair enough, it is in a little bit of a different price bracket, but you can have just a basic Defender 90 with, I believe, a four-cylinder engine for just under 50 grand. So they do make an affordable version of the Land Rover Defender. Well, what do I think of this Defender 90 as a whole? I've kind of already gone over it. I think it is so special. It's so fabulous. It's it's great. It's such an enthusiast package. It's unique. It's special. And um, well, if I won the lottery tomorrow, I would buy one of these. 100% would buy one of these. Or maybe I'd buy two of them. You can also have the supercharged V8 in the four-door configuration. So you could even have it as a more practical unit uh, and carry your whole family around. But I mean, honestly, the only thing that makes the two-door less convenient is just getting in and out of it because you still have so much room in the back. <laughs> oh, a little bit of burble there from the exhaust. Sometimes between three and 4,000 RPM, you get some pops and burbles and it's just, ugh, so fantastic. Yeah, this is a really, really good car. I don't know, do I have any complaints about this car? Uh, well, I'd probably want to have a bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty just because it is a Land Rover. Luckily, buying this car new, it does come with a warranty, so you wouldn't really have to worry about that if you're the first owner. I don't think there's anything I don't like about this car. You need a couple of interior rattles, but everything in this class um, has some interior rattles, so that's... I mean, maybe they could make it a little bit tighter for $108,000. Other than that, though, do I have any complaints? I don't really think I do. Lowering down into access height, thank you very much. <laughs> Cool guys, well that's been the uh, Land Rover Defender 90 5 liter supercharged V8. Oh, I've triggered the uh, thing. Nothing. No. Never mind. Sorry. Okay. Anyways. Ah! Why is it just giving me music? <laughs> Maybe it thought I wanted music. All right, let's get out of here before it starts doing more things. That reminds me, make sure you check the link in the description uh, to watch Charlie's sound system review of this Meridian sound system. It's actually a pretty decent unit for this class. All right, guys. Well, thank you all so much for watching. If you can't tell, I really, really like this Land Rover. It's not very often we get cars that have this much soul, and it is a dying breed. Get one of these while you can. They're actually selling at sticker. If you go on Auto Trader, you can actually find a good number of these cars for around 108 grand, which is what this one stickers for. So I can only conclude that they're actually selling these cars at MSRP. So take advantage of that while you can, or maybe wait a couple years so the used car market will sort itself out and you'll be able to pick one of these up certified for about half that. That's what I'm hoping because I would love to own one of these. All right, guys, well, thank you all so much for watching. This has been Christopher Brower here with Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.